What's up guys, Gary here again for GenVFX. Uh, welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, this one has been bubbling away with me for a while. I've done it several times and absolutely hated everything that I've said and done. So this is the nth time that I've done this. I don't know what it is. For some reason, you know, you come up with an idea and you think that's going to be a great tutorial. And then for some reason you get to it and you're like, God, I'm boring myself. This isn't good. But I think I've sold it now. I want to talk to you about uh, linking files inside of Blender and not using, please forgive me, the asset browser. Now I love the asset browser, it's very good. You can use it to bring files in. In fact, let me talk about this by actually doing it. It would make more sense. I'm gonna add in here a grid and I am going to scale it by seven to make it a bit of a larger area. And I'm just gonna turn on the wireframe because wireframe, wireframe, thank you. Because it looks nicer with a wireframe on it. I'm going to bring up the asset browser. We're in layout window, so that's fine. So here's the asset browser. And I've actually got some stuff in here, the unsigned one. I've got this thing called Ref Thingy. And it kind of looks like a weird sort of like, it's like a durian with a big top on it. But you know, I mean, that's that's actually quite, you know, a square durian. It's very blender. Right, so basically this is set to uh, just append. Yeah, so I can pop this anywhere like this. And there it is. I can bring it in again. I pop it there. And but I, if I go into uh, shading mode, if we look, if I click this, I I can click either of these, and they're both using the same material. You can see it's, the material isn't changing. That's because when I bring it in, what I'm following is the append reuse data, which is the setup that I've got for this particular object. Because when I've actually done this, when I've ever do any project work, what I tend to do if I'm going to be reusing assets, is I build those libraries as folders here, append assets to 3D, one props, and then the same with environment, and then the same with characters, so that they're there available everywhere inside of that project structure that I'm using. So I can just go, oh, I want that building, I want that block, I want this thing, blah, 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 blah. And there are three ways for things to be brought in. We have link, which it basically goes, whatever the file is, if you update it, I will update it. So that's great. Link is brilliant. That's really, really useful. Then you have append, which basically brings the objects completely into the scene. And every time you bring it in, it'll bring in the new version of the shader, new bird of everything. Whereas if you have, say, 100 rocks and they've all got the same shader on them, you only want one shader, then you change it from append to append reuse data. So if something comes in with the same name, it'll reuse that name, particularly with shading. It's very useful. Um, and that's what I've used with these. So that's really, really good. Now, what you can do, of course, is you can change it to whatever you want when you're about to bring it in anyway. So let me just delete these two. And this ref thingy, I'm gonna change this to link. It is already set to, that's right, yeah, it's written to link. And when I drop it in, you can see that it vanishes. It doesn't appear anywhere. Its name is there. And when I let go, doesn't matter where I let go, it puts it in the middle. And if you press N on your keyboard, you will see that these are locked. Now this is where it actually falls down because actually being able to bring an object in and then being able to move it and then later update it, because if you bring them in as a pens, it, they're not updatable. You need to be able to actually animate that thing. So this is why I don't use this really at all, which is a shame because if we just didn't have this static element with the linking, then, and I'm sure it's gonna go in some future release, if not 4.0, which is literally banging on the doors for release, then it will be in another one after that because it doesn't work. I mean, it works, but it doesn't work. So what we tend to do, and I'm just gonna do this right now, I'm gonna delete this because I don't want it in there. What we tend to do is not use this. So let's just, Get rid of this window. <laughs> not duplicate it, Gary. That's not the thing you want to do. I want to bring this up to here. I'm going to bring this up to here. And I'm going to bring this down. Okay, so here we go. Here is our, you know, here's our basically the, the ground for our layout. Now I still want that item, okay? So I'm going to go file and we're going to go link up here. Now this is not the same link. So I can now go here into my uh, props folder I've got and I'm going to click ref thingy. I'm going to go link, and then it tells me what do you want. What do you want from this scene? Do you want a material? Do you want a link and you know a, a whole collection 
a brush maybe, a camera probably, you know, that's a good thing to do. A whole scene maybe, of which there is a whole scene, so you can bring the whole lot in. But I actually want to bring in just a mesh and I want to bring in a ref thingy cube because that's the object and I'm going to link it. And now here, you'll notice straight away, it's a different color and it puts us off there. And if I do this with it, if I move it over here and go IL, put a keyframe in there, let's get a frame, let's set it to only 120 frames. And I'll bring this over here and I press IL and then look, I've got a little bit of animation. So it's not, I'm not trying to get anything that's great. I'm just trying to get some animation. So let's do this and let's very quickly change this to a graph editor and let's get all of that and let's pick this and let's change the uh, interpolation mode to a bounce. Okay, why not? Because we can. So let's change that back to the timeline. Bring this back to here and it goes doom, 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 doom. okay so that's there so that's say that's off that's our animation that's it that's the animation so i'm going to file and i'm going to save this as i'm going to call it shot 10 because i like shot 10 as if you want in my shots save it as that okay so that's there shot 10 and actually i've suddenly realized that my object needs to update now I can either go in and make a file and copy it into ref thingy to replace it in there. Problem with that is that it's got to have exactly the same naming convention of the object because I haven't brought in the scene. If I brought in just the scene, then whatever's in the scene will come in, which actually is probably a better way of doing it because it references the fact that there is a scene and every Blender scene, when you create the, every Blender file, sorry, has a Blender scene as its base. It's like the bag that carries all the sweets and crisps and stuff that make up your scene, yeah? So that's great. But I now need to replace this one object. So I'm like, oh, what do I do, what do I do? Well, here is the thing, this is what you do. And this is why it's also brilliant, this. Now I want to replace this object. How do I do it? Up here, up here, we have, here, we have in our display mode, what's set to what is we known as what is we known as view layer and that basically shows you a standard outliner kind of setup it's nice but obviously there's more stuff in there i've shown you these before uh, there's the video sequencer uh, which displays all the data that you have in your video sequencing and that's it this is all about data you can have the blend files so it tells you basically the display data of all the files and the link libraries so i can click on this i can go down here and you can see libraries if we click on that we can see that which we can open up here and i'll go that's a mesh and you open up this and you go oh yes it's there yeah that's all of it so you can see it but you can't mess with it there however if you look further down here there's some called data api and you'll also notice that it looks like a dna chain and that is fundamental because this is basically the dna of your scene you can go in and you can pick out bits and put bits in so if i go over here to our meshes, where are you? Meshes, objects, will it be in there? Yeah, well, there you go, yeah, I could look at it in there. But also, I think, because it's a mesh and brought in, it probably makes more sense. I should, should have sworn I could see something called meshes. Yeah, we got meshes. Open that up, similar sort of thing. Library, you click on library and it says ref thingy blend. Okay, that's true, that's what it is. Um, uh, yeah, extra user maybe missing data. There's nothing there. Everything is all working correctly. The library is good, but here we have the file path. Yeah. So that I'm going to bring up a notepad now, just so we can do this. Uh, notepad app. What I can do is I can go right. Well, where's he gone? There's he gone. Let's bring it back here. Just pop it over so I can see it. I can go right. Okay. So let's select all of this. All of that, go control C, go into my notepad, click it and go control V. And I can see that that's saying, you go up three folders from here to reach assets and then it's here. Okay. Now I might not want that. Yeah. I might want to use something different. For example, I might want to use ref thingy two, which I haven't built, but let's just say I'm going to do that. So let's go file. Let's just save this as it is all good. I'm going to go open here. And I'm going to go up, 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 which is what those little dots meant. The backslashes go the other way. And then into 3D and then into props and ref thingy. And I'm going to open, I'm going to open this. Yeah, let's open ref thingy. 
So there it is. And let's make some alterations to it. Let's, uh, I don't know, let's delete that. In fact, no, I tell you what, I'm going to do it for, for, for purposes of speed. Uh, let's go to vertices. Let's do that. I'm going to scale those in. I've done it the wrong way again. Alt V, there you go. Select them all. Alt V again to come back out of that. Let's just scale those in. So, uh, send they're in. And then let's go uh, G, Z and bring those in to about there. Let's just get in the wireframe again and go uh, G, Z. Bring them down to here. And I'm going to save this as ref thingy two ref thingy two save that so it's a different reference object okay it is a different reference object so then okay let's do this let's go back to our shot yep and we see that there we go back here into our meshes here and into our ref thingy cube which is still there and working really well and let's see this so we can see it's ref thingy Okay, we go back here to our thing and we go ref thingy and I'm just going to put two in there and hit return and you'll see that nothing's happened. So let's save the scene though and then go open and you'll see that your object has changed but amazingly it still has the animation in it. So that is a far better way of actually using linked files than the way that you do with the asset manager and it's not that there's a problem with the asset manager it's it's it is actually a really good thing but if you're animating stuff and you're going to be adding bits to a model you need to have this level of control which currently it does not but i'm sure it's just a little tick somewhere they've got to do because they're brilliant because let's be honest i love blender i love blender it's fabulous i wouldn't change it for anything else i just wouldn't because it's just brilliant anyway that's it really um I hope this has been of some use to you. Um, again, it's just a recommendation thing. I would recommend you looking into pipelines. Um, and by that, I mean basically the structure which you do things. Do you know what? Actually, very quickly, let me show you. I, 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 this, is, this, is kind of, kind of, this is kind of the sort of thing that I was trying to explain before. Um, this is how you go about doing stuff. Uh, mostly, what you're trying to do, first of all, is you try and put your idea into some sort of form that you will use and it generally exists of here's my idea my idea is here yep and then i start planning it out the point of pipelining basically is that if you don't do this you will never have a finished piece of work you will possibly but it will take you longer loads longer because you haven't got a structure you haven't got it organized so the idea is to plan it then start the pre-animation stuff so you basically organize your story create a treatment and then a script do a storyboard that you can then use with pre-recorded guide VO with a microphone like the one I'm looking at right now and then creating a pre-visualized version of it which you can then use as a guide for everything you're going to do so by that point you know what you're going to be building what you're going to be uh, creating so there's loads of modeling that you're going to do and then you're going to go through look development with that and then doing all your UVs and then the shading and even more look development and then rigging it and then creating stuff that you can use then once you've done that then you can decide once you've laid out every single shot and by that i mean making a shot based on every single shot you've got in your previous and then you can animate them and then you can animate them whatever order you want because you've got them all you're not doing straight ahead in terms of shots you're doing anything you want in the order you want and you as you do one you tick it off you know going through the blocking and then the different passes and refinement and then finishing all those and then rendering them all off compositing them all together pushing them through a grade and then publishing every single shot down, which then goes back into an online and that is your project done. And that's basically what I mean by pipelining, having a system that you go through. And why is it important when it comes to this sort of stuff? Because that's where you have all your setups and everything. Like we had here, we had the 3D folder that had all that stuff in. If I just pop this out again, basically, if I just pop that back to the one, what you've got here is here is your entire sort of like foldery thing that's where you have your edits these are all your assets and by that i mean artwork for reference and all that sort of stuff textures and then 3d environments and 3d characters and 3d props and then audio files like music and voice and then finally rushes which is where if you're using live action this is where the plates that you get from your camera or from someone sending it to you all these plates and all these shots that have been selected they're awesome often referred to as selects in fact they sit in rushes 
and then in your final setups, you know, because you'll be using assets from here all over the place, you can access these objects without using them anymore, without having them any more than in one place, which is imperative because it means if they're only in one place, when they change them in that place, they update everywhere, everywhere. I want to draw big circles on the screen like this. I want to go everywhere. So all of this, you have one environment here that goes into Blender and goes into Houdini and goes into After Effects. Because After Effects is starting to be able to use 3D stuff, man. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It's great. Anyway, I am going to leave you on that note. I'll go back basically to my shot 10 because it's it's not very pretty. It's not very pretty, uh, but it is an indication of how useful, useful referencing can be um, without breaking animation. So I will uh, leave you there and uh, listen, take care of yourself guys and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Bye.